So PlayStation Plus finally fully relaunched. It's not anything new. We've had PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now for a while. But as of today, June 13th, in South and North America and other places in the world, the new PlayStation Plus service is live. Let's talk about it. Yo, my name is Julian Mullick, and welcome back to the Console Gaming Channel. That's right. We're button mashers, thumbstick thrashers, and here to have a good time playing video games. Today, today is all about that PlayStation Plus Premium, the top tier, the $17.99 a month, $49.99 quarterly, or $119.99 yearly subscription tier. There are other two other tiers below, which I'm not going to cover because this is the one people are most likely looking into or trying to figure out if it is worth it. And I'm just going to cut to the chase. I think it is. And let me explain why. There are 10 different sections, and a few of them are exclusive just to the premium tier, some to the extra tier, and some are provided across all. So let's start with the all. You have the online multiplayer. That is basically the online. It's Nintendo Switch Online, Xbox Live Gold, PlayStation Plus. You have to pay for that online service. You have cloud saves, which is pretty nice because then you don't have to worry so much about local storage. Not that it's taking up a lot of storage, but you can carry your saves across multiple consoles or different places, and that's good. You have exclusive discounts. And that's, again, across the board. You're getting that with all three tiers, and you also get exclusive packs, PlayStation Plus packs and downloadable content that is delivered to individuals with PlayStation Plus. The final thing that's available across all of the subscription tiers is the downloadable games. You are going to get a few downloadable games every single month, and some of them are really, really good. Some of them are like, we don't understand why you gave it. Let me give you an example. They gave us the latest version of FIFA. Okay, that's a $70 game. That was last month. This month, they gave us God of War, which is available to any PS Plus subscriber. Any tier. Why? Because PS Plus also has something called PlayStation Plus Collection. And that is a collection of games that they have picked that are, I guess, deserving of being given to anyone who has the subscription service. Like Last of Us or God of War. Yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn. You kind of get the picture. There's a good amount of games that they choose. Some of them newer, some of them older. So I don't understand why they're making a big deal about giving us that game for free. Anyway. I digress. Getting into some other ones. One of the sections here is called Game Help. Okay, so it's basically just like a little astro comes out and tells you what to do. Cool. That's really not necessary. That's weird. That's weird, but it's there. It's advertised as something you get. Now, let's get into stuff that is more exclusive to the premium tier. Number one thing that is exclusive just to premium tier are game trials. Now, this is an interesting concept. I'm not mad at this concept. I'm just curious how they're going to implement it. Hobbs. You got some good theories, but we're going to stick to what's actually there. Okay, buddy? Love you, man. So basically, there are games selected, and each game has a designated amount of time. It's not standardized. For instance, the new Horizon Forbidden West game, five hours of gameplay, trial time, full gameplay. The game, but you get five hours to play. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, two hours. Cyberpunk, five hours. I, you know, maybe it's just there's heavy cinematics. I'm not sure, but that is... A more modular thing and i think that the game trials if implemented correctly could be a really valuable super valuable offering in this service because games are so unbelievably expensive if we're not getting day one releases like the xbox game pass is giving us playstation has come out and said they will not be doing day one releases to their service then it is good that we have these trials because that kind of gives us the should we buy it should we not buy it I'm into the idea. I think it's kind of cool. I see how it could potentially be good. And again, this is like day one, week one, month one of this new revamping of the service and they're going to be adding to it, at least they say they will, on a regular basis. Into the second thing, which is the classics catalog. Classics catalog is actually something I'm the most excited for. PS1, PSP, and PS2 games being added to this classics catalog. As it stands now, there aren't a lot of games in there, but they do have some that really take me back. They have Siphon Filter. They have Red Faction 2. That game, I don't know if a lot of you have played it before, but it was a first-person shooter that I loved playing with my friends. They also have the Mark of Kree. I loved the Mark of Kree. It was such an interesting game. It was like one of the first M-rated games that I played when I was really young. 
on the PlayStation 2, on my small little CRT TV that I kept in my closet in my room. Like so many memories. And that's a big thing that PlayStation, I think, has going for them is this service brings 750 something, I think it was like 753 when I was trying to count it, around 750 games to the table. And while Game Pass Ultimate brings day one new releases to the table, this does have something kind of different. And if you've been playing PlayStation for a really long time, yeah, I've owned a PlayStation since the PlayStation 1, then there are going to be games on there that you haven't seen in a while. There's gonna be a nostalgia factor that actually makes it kind of worth it. But that's not for everybody. And if you have a PlayStation 5 and you're looking to push the PlayStation 5 to its limits, there's a lot to be left on the table. But let's move into a couple of the other categories. The classics catalog, exciting stuff is there. So cloud streaming. Now this is really interesting because this comes kind of twofold. One is for the extra and the premium subscribers, you get access to cloud streaming on a PC. Now I have not dived into the PC side of things yet. Don't worry. A video will be coming about that. But from what I am understanding is there is going to be PC offerings of these games, PS4 and PS5 games, to stream. That is wild. We'll see how that all pans out. It looks like we're getting into like a play however you want situation on PlayStation. I wasn't expecting them to start investing in this, but we'll see how it pans out. Now with that cloud streaming, we also get PlayStation 3 titles. A really big catalog of PlayStation 3 titles. Exclusive to the premium tier, streaming only. I don't understand why they're holding these PlayStation 3 titles behind a stream wall. I don't think that streaming is the best solution for a lot of people. Not everyone has good internet. So this is gonna be an interesting thing to see pan out. Now, this was already the case for PlayStation Now. If you're a PlayStation Now subscriber, PlayStation 3 games, the giant catalog that existed, were all stream only, which I wasn't a huge fan of, and I even have really good internet. Now, getting into the game catalog, because there is a divide here when it comes to the extra as well as the premium tier essential tier not getting this but that game catalog that's where the ps3 divide happens now there are more games ps4 ps5 ps3 games on the premium tier as well as the <laughs> classic console stuff and on the extra tier you're just getting the ps4 and ps5 games which is still pretty cool because they have newer ps5 titles like returnal which I might actually play through the whole game now. And they have the new Miles Morales on there too, so I might actually try that Spider-Man game too. Uh, the PS5 titles that they keep on that game catalog are actually pretty dope. But the biggest thing I want to bring up is the potential. The potential of this service to actually be compelling. We see that different video game companies just are taking forever to release newer games. And it looks like 2022 is already starting to kind of fizzle out. It's like a buy year for all of these video game companies. And based on what's happening in the world, it doesn't surprise me all that much, right? We have so many things delayed. But what this allows us to do is keep us busy and play games we used to play and get excited about playing video games again. And I think that is the most important thing that this has, is that it gets people excited to play video games again. Yes, this is not pushing the limits. It's not showing you every single ounce of power that your PlayStation 5 can do. But what it is doing is giving you an experience or allowing you to have an experience playing video games that you used to play or games that you always wanted to but never got around to. I think it's exciting. I think 750 odd games to play on your PlayStation 5 is an exciting thing. I think playing some of the classics on your PlayStation 5, I mean, heck, they have Super Star Wars on there. I think that's exciting. I think that these companies investing more time in these streaming and on-demand services is exciting. I want to make sure, though, that the companies are also investing more money in some of the developments of the newer titles that we were going to have to pay $70 for. But that's another video for another time. If you guys dug it, hit the like. If you guys want to be a part of this community and hang out with Hobbs more, Hobbs is the one, not me, Hobbs. Hit the sub, but most of all, happy gaming.